Hello, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, I hope you're having a good, a good night. I hope you guys are having a good day. Hey, let's wait one minute, just uh, for the people to get started. Okay, hello everybody, good evening. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so uh, tell me, have you been practicing? Have you guys been uh, uh, doing reviewing some, some videos, going over the notes? Have you guys looked at some tests there on YouTube, some practice tests? Oh, yes. yes. So, okay. I got a serious headache. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Wilfredo, did you did you get a chance to look at some of the tests there uh, on YouTube? Have you? Uh, what have you been doing to pr to prepare? Yes. For the test? I, yes, I was uh, I was taking a look to some uh, videos, that, um, and I practiced a couple of them. You know, trying to okay. make them better, but you know. Good, good. That's good. That's good. Practice is, is, is important. Yeah, right. All right. Little by little, little by little, we're going to go ahead and get new things. Now, uh, uh, before, maybe a week ago, you were a little afraid of the test, or maybe you didn't know what to expect, but now you do, right? Yeah. Trying to Guys, make it better. Yeah. Do you feel a little more confident with with some areas of the test? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, that's important, right? Because sometimes, uh, uh, you know, sometimes we are afraid of what we don't know, you know? So lo desconocido, lo desconocido por veces nos, nos infunde un poco de miedo, right? That's but now scary. you know the test, you know the reading section, you know the questions, you know some strategies, you're you're becoming a little more familiar with the test and that's good it's, that's progress that's very good progress and it's only we've only been here for two weeks right today is going to be class number eight uh but it's only it's only been two weeks so that's good uh what about you uh melody veronica hello andrea hello hello mm -hmm. How do you feel uh, about the test? Uh, have you been uh, practicing? Today I made the second evaluation about uh -huh. listening, but uh, sometimes I felt uncomfortable for the accent mm -hmm. for the person who speak. Okay. Uh, some words I don't, I didn't understand. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, Veronica, what about you? How do you feel I'm, about the test? Or I'm glad I feel more confident uh -huh. uh, because I've been practicing more and, mm -hmm. and also uh, I've already finished the section number two. 
Okay. And now I'm trying to finish the section number three. But it's very good that we all have been practicing. Okay. Help us. Very good. De, de eso se trata. Okay. That's good. That's what it's all about. Learning different strategies. Uh, becoming familiar with the test, understanding the, some of the questions, understanding uh, strategies, what can be helpful. That's what's important. All right. Uh, Melody, what about you? I feel more confident about taking the test mm -hmm. because I think the strategies will work. Uh -huh. um, in, in particular, taking notes, I have never made up by myself, but I, I, I really uh, say that it will work because I do it very good since I take notes. Mm -hmm. That simple. Okay, good. Good. So today we're going to look at some uh, different strategies to take notes. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do some listening to an audio. We're going to take notes. No tanto contestar las preguntas. I mean, that, that's good. That's important. But let's focus today on taking notes. Okay. I want to improve my ability, my skills of being able to take notes. Okay. So let me go ahead and share some information with you, right? Like uh, I always like to share something with you so that you can you know, start to think. Remember that my information is just something to help you. Uh, maybe you have some other ideas and that's okay. All right, very good. Uh, let's talk about taking notes for the test, right? Uh, remember that the, uh, you can take notes for all the tests. You can take notes for the reading. You can take notes for the listening. You can take notes for the writing section, okay? And they're gonna give you a paper and pencil in the test, but the answers is gonna be computer-based. So, right, it's gonna be in the internet, right? But you have the paper and pencil to take notes, okay? And that's your notes and you can do it. Uh, remember, it's not only the listening part that you're going to take notes because on the writing section, right, we're going to see this in, the, in maybe next week when we, when we work on writing, but on the writing section, you have to read a paragraph and listen to a paragraph and then write your opinion. So you can take notes there too. Okay, all right, so note taking, uh, you will need to take notes for all the sections of the TOEFL test. This becomes extremely important in the listening section. The writing section will include notes also. Okay, you can take notes for the writing section too. Okay, uh, do's and don'ts, right? What you can do, what you can't do, what you shouldn't do uh, as far as taking notes, all right? This is some ideas. Maybe you're, you're doing some of these things, right? And that's why you're having a hard time with the notes. So let's say, for example, let's focus on the do's. Do focus on general or major ideas, okay? Focus on major and general ideas, okay? For example, an introduction can be, okay? There were three major events leading up to the American Civil War. Civil. I stop. Um, maybe this is the the idea that you hear on the test on the beginning of the of the audio. There were three major lead, uh, events leading up to the American Civil War. Okay. Now, what are you going to focus on? You're going to focus on the three events. Okay. These are going to be the major ideas. The three events. So when you listen to the audio, you want to focus on these things, okay? No, I, I don't want to focus on all the details, right? Uh, for example, how many people died, how many, you know, I, I'm not going to be able to write all that information, but I can focus on the major events, okay? Cuales son? Number one, number two, number three. So what I would do in a piece of paper, 
I will put, solo voy a escribir three events. One, two, three. Voy a numerar. So when I'm listening, I'm going to try to write those major events, right? So focus on major ideas, the general ideas. Uh, another uh, tip that I can give you is use divisions. Use divisions. What, what I mean by that, uh, remember that we had an example where there was uh, different divisions. For example, there was, uh, aquí hay una teoría, aquí había otra teoría, aquí había otra teoría. Entonces, what you can do is focus on those divisions when you take notes, okay? Uh, another thing that you can do is use abbreviation. That's very important, right? For example, if the, the topic is the, the example that I gave you there, right? Uh, American Civil War, right? Let's say, for example, they're talking about history, American Civil War. How can I abbreviate this in my notes? ACV. ACV, ahí está, right? That's a good way. I, ACV. Boom. W, sorry. Ah, yeah, AC, ACW. Sorry, me fui, me fui contigo también. ACW, right? American Civil War. That's it, right? So I don't have to write everything. I can just abbreviate. For example, remember yesterday we were talking about, there was a, 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 a audio about music, okay? and music, jazz, okay? So maybe you don't want to write music again, just put M, okay? Maybe you don't want to write jazz, the word jazz, just write J, okay? It's your notes, you're going to remember that that is music or that is jazz, okay? So try to use abbreviation as much as you can, right? Uh, for example, Common abbreviations that, that we that we use. Pueden uh, usar different abbreviations. For example, um, student, professor. Okay, different abbreviations. No solamente título, but anything else, right? So doctor, right? I mean, try to use abbreviations. Um, another tip that I can give you is use symbols, try to use symbols. For example, instead of saying and, verdad? A conjunction and, you guys can use the symbol. Creo que este, let me see. Uh, no, it's not this one. Mm. It looks like this, no sé si ustedes lo han visto. A little symbol that looks like this, right? And. Puede ser end, okay. Uh, ajá, no, es, uh, no, no lo encuentro aquí en mi teclado porque tengo mi, mi no, no cambié el teclado a inglés, so no, no me sale el symbol. But it basically means end. Let me see if someone did it. Ese, ese símbolo. Uh -huh. So that, that means end, right? Uh, you can use a symbol, right? For example, your main idea in the in the topic, let's say for example, is uh, uh, they're talking about Martin Luther King, right? Un personaje de la historia, you guys know, right? Uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, el que peleó por los derechos humanos, humanos allá, no, derechos civiles y allá de los, de, los, de los morenos en Estados Unidos. So you can use a symbol, right? For example, I'm just gonna use the symbol M, okay? So every time Martin Luther King viene, he M, okay? Or maybe you can use the symbol main idea. Mi personaje principal, I can maybe use this, okay? A square or a triangle, okay? Whatever, anything, anything that's gonna help you, okay? Uh, try to use a symbol for something, okay? For example, remember that they were talking about the moon and we heard a passage where they were talking about speaking about the moon. And don't don't write moon. No escriban la palabra M O O N. Just circle moon. Okay? Anything that can help you. 
right? Inventas, sean creativos, use different symbols and different out, you know, different uh, abbreviations that you like. Um, ya vamos a ver algunos ejemplos de abbreviations. Um, outlines, what I mean by out outlines is for example, right? Uh, uh, three major reasons for the American Civil War, right? So what I can do is do an outline right here. I can uh, do something like this. Where is see my I can do one, two, three. All right, kids said como un outline, right? So right here, I'm gonna have my first reason for the American Civil War, uh, slaves, los esclavos, se pelearon por los esclavos, right? Uh, next one was, uh, uh, Politics, okay, whatever. Uh, después finalmente se pelearon por territory. All right, lo que sea, right, whatever. So, an outline, something like this, right? Three major reasons, voy a poner tres puntitos, o voy a enumerar, one, two, three, whatever. Okay, you can do an outline. Uh, I think Miguel say flow chart or a flow, right? Outline or flow, the same thing, outline. Um, you can enumerate, right? Use numbers, right? Uh, for example, if they're putting ideas in order, you can put ideas in order too, right? One, two, three, four, right? Whatever, put your ideas in order, okay? Uh, you can also use your own codes if you want, okay? Whatever helps you, but try to abbreviate, right? Uh, don't, don't write out the whole sentence. And today we're going to do some practice, right? Uh, I'm going to take some notes. You guys are going to take some notes and we can share ideas. Um, don'ts, things you shouldn't do. Don't write every word that you hear. Don't write every word that you hear. Um, even for um, American speakers, even for native speakers, some of the words that are on the on the on the TOEFL, they don't understand. Okay. Uh, so uh, they don't understand. Okay. For example, right? Uh, uh, fracking. Creo que así se escribe, ¿eh? Is bad for the environment. Okay. Now, you hear this, right? This is what you hear. Pero, hey, ¿y qué fracking? Like, what is that? I don't, I don't know what that is. Okay? So don't worry, okay? Don't worry about the word. Worry about the meaning. Because possibly... In the audio, they're going to explain what fracking, fracking is, okay? Don't worry about that word. Y eso que significa, I don't understand, ya me perdí, no sé cómo, cómo escribirla, I don't know, y me confundí, ya perdí 30 segundos. Don't worry about that, okay? What you can do is, okay, escuché esa palabra, no sé cómo escribirla, I'm just going to put an F, okay? <laughs> All right? But, en lo que va el audio, me van a dar la definición. They're going to help me understand what, what that is, okay? Be because I'm going to hear words and, and ideas and stuff like that, right? And you guys are going to see that fracking, lo que es fracking es sacando como eh, recursos naturales de las piedras que están abajo de la, de, de la tierra, okay? Es como buscando fossil fuel. ¿Verdad? Eso es lo que es fracking. Y me acuerdo esta palabra porque es lo que estaban hablando en el debate con Joe Biden y, 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 y Donald Trump. Y me acuerdo que salió esta palabra, ¿verdad? Que salió esto, que diciendo que eh, Trump acusaba a Biden de estar en contra de fracking. Y yo, y yo ¿qué es eso? Decía yo, what is that? I never heard of that word before. Okay? Pero no me puse a ver Google, sino que escuché que era drilling, dijo drilling, oil, fossil fuel, 
Ah, dije, ah, ya sé lo que están hablando. Están hablando de sacar algún recurso natural de la tierra. Right? Ah, oh, ok, I understand, dije. And I continue listening. All right? So, you can do the same thing. If you hear a word, you don't understand it completely, just abbreviate it. Even if you don't know how to spell it, don't worry. Don't go to Google. Don't go to your dictionary. Don't worry. And then listen for other ideas or explanations of the meaning, right? Porque en realidad no me importa cómo se escribe. ¿Saben por qué? Porque la forma que se escribe probablemente va a estar en las preguntas. Okay? Las preguntas me van a dar la forma de escribir, el spelling de la palabra. Lo que yo necesito entender es the meaning, the main idea. What is fracking? Okay? So that's, that's what you want to focus on. All right? Uh, so that's what I mean. Don't write every word. Don't try to every, understand every difficult word. Don't try to understand it, everything. And try not to capture every single detail, okay? Try to capture only the main ideas, okay? Let's look at an ex example, okay? Uh, we will listen to, for example, digamos que ustedes escuchan esto en el audio, right? Empieza el audio, okay, ready for the test, play. Today, we will listen to three main ideas why fracking is bad. Y si ustedes se enfocaron en fracking al inicio y quieren entender al inicio qué es fracking, cómo se escribe, right? Se van a perder. Because yo no sé qué es fracking. I don't know, right? But I'm going to listen to the main ideas, right? So I don't know how to spell it, but I, I'm just going to, solo voy a poner así, abbreviate, okay? And, escuché que, at the beginning, three main ideas. Ah, so este, esta charla va a ser de three main ideas. Eso lo tengo que captar. So I'm going to write one, two, three, okay? And I'm going to try to understand the main idea. But if I have three main ideas about fracking, ya naturalmente, ya después voy a saber qué es fracking. Ya voy a tener una definition. Okay. You understand? Pero si me enfoco, oh man, what is that? What is fracking? I don't understand. Don't worry, because the main ideas will give you the definition. Okay? Very good. No sé si me estoy dando a entender. Like, do you guys understand? Yes. Right? Los errores que por veces cometemos, right? So try not to do that, right? So I today we will listen to three main ideas about fracking. Yeah, I don't know what fracking is, but I have three main ideas. I need to listen to those three main ideas. And that's what you focus on, okay? And that's what you're going to take notes on, right? All right. Uh, common codes, different uh, different codes that you can use, right? Um, th these are good codes, right? For example, if you have a, a question or maybe you have something uh, like a check symbol that means correct, uh, something that is special and important, you can write this, right? Uh, because, BC, B4, Right? Uh, definition, yo uso esta. De hecho, la usé ahorita. Different. This is a good abbreviation that you can use. Okay? For example, um, yo no uso esta. E.G., yo uso esta. For, for example. Uh, creo que... No, yo uso esta. Okay? For example. Okay? You can change it, you can have different ones, okay? So this is an example of uh, codes or abbreviations that you can use for note-taking. So, eh, empiecen a usar algunas, right? Try to look for some. Si no, pues in inventense ustedes, ¿verdad? Con, o sea, acuérdense que sus notas solamente ustedes la van a leer y entender. All right? Um, this is other symbols that you can use, right? 
Okay. For example, let's say I, I'm taking notes, right? And I listen to the word fracking, right? I don't, I don't know what that is, right? De hecho, ni sé si estoy, no estoy seguro de que, que se escribe así con C. I don't even know. But, right, I'm going to use the symbol, right? Okay, great, great, great. So what I'm going to do is, voy a usar un symbol, maybe an arrow, right? The arrow is going to give me maybe a definition here. Escuché algo que, se, que estaba hablando de drilling oil. Ah, fracking tiene que ver con drilling oil, okay? So I, you can use something like this, okay? This is just some ideas for you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and let's go to the audio. I want you to get paper. I want you to get paper, pencil, markers, whatever you want, okay? Let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to listen to, to an audio. Let me just play it. Okay, I think uh, the one that, that we did yesterday, we didn't finish. The one that we did before that, uh, we didn't finish either. So maybe we can use one of those. Hold on. Okay, ya la encontré, sorry. All right, very good. So let me go ahead and share with you. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, can you see where it says conversation? Yes. Yeah, okay. Ooh, hold on. Uh, I want to share audio. Voy a compartir el audio um, so that you can hear. Okay, can you see now conversation? Uh, we're gonna play it, okay? Hey, let's listen to this conversation. It's gonna be between two students, okay, two friends. Let's take notes on this conversation, all right? Um, yo también, yo voy a hacer my notes. I'm gonna try to uh, have my notes ready, right? And then maybe you can do the same, definitivamente, right? Try to take some notes. Okay, you guys are ready? Let's do, let's do some notes. Listen to part of a conversation between two students. ¿Escucharon eso? ¿Sí? Yes. Okay, right. All right, good, good. Uh, ahora sé que me está funcionando el audio. All right. Hey, thanks for meeting me here. I figured the dormitory lounge would be a good place to get started on our engineering project. There's lots of space, and I don't think anyone will bother us. No problem. This looks like the perfect place. Comfortable couches. We can lay out our papers on that coffee table there. Hey, you've even got a TV. Uh-uh, no television tonight. We've got some serious work to do. I know, just kidding. Actually, I'm looking forward to this. Designing our own amusement park is a pretty cool project. The way I see it, if we put two or three hours of solid work in tonight, you know, planning and stuff, we should be able to split up the work and finish everything by early next week. Oh, you want to split the work up? I thought we'd uh, just meet up for an hour or two each night and do everything together. Well, the problem is my schedule. I'm free tonight, but most nights after class I have to work. Oh, I didn't know you had a part-time job. Yeah, I'm a bartender at the Main Street Tavern, down on the other end of town. The hours are terrible, but the money is good and I need all the money I can get to pay my tuition. Wow, that's tough. What are your hours? They vary a bit, but usually Tuesday through Saturday from 8 p.m. until closing time, which can be anywhere from midnight until 2 a.m., depending on how busy we are. Oh my gosh, when do you find time to study? Well, that's the thing. I usually do my studying late at night after work, then I go to bed around 6 or 7 a.m. and sleep until noon which gives me just enough time to get to my first class. No wonder your eyes are always red in class. So, okay, 
We can divide up the work between the two of us and work on our own schedules. But even if we're designing separate components of the amusement park, we're really going to need to reference each other's work, you know? If we want the final project to look right, I mean. Sure, you've got a computer, right? We'll be doing most of our work online, so at the end of each day, we can just send each other what we've done. It'll be almost the same as if we were working side by side. I suppose so. If we just put all our work together into the final design, well, we should probably get together at least one more time. To go over everything and make sure it looks good, that's probably a good idea. I'm free pretty much all day Sunday, after I wake up anyway. And I've also got some time next Monday after class. What do you think? I think Monday is probably cutting it too close. I'd like to hand in the finished project on Tuesday, Wednesday at the latest. If we were to find some sort of problem, that wouldn't give us very much time to fix it. True. Okay, Sunday then. Sunday works for me. What time do you think you'll get up? To be honest, I like to sleep in on Sundays. Would three or four in the afternoon be too late? No, that'd be fine. Okay, so we'll have our second and final meeting Sunday afternoon at four. Are you okay with meeting here again? Sure, this is great. I like your lounge. Good. All right, then let's get started. Now? Okay. Let me, uh, let me stop sharing so that we can focus on some of the notes, okay? Uh, let me see. Show me your notes. Miguel, what do you got? Okay. All right. It's a little difficult to see. Mess. <laughs> it's a little difficult to see. Don't worry. It's okay. Yeah. Don't, don't worry. I understand. All right. Good. Good. I see that you're doing a lot of outlines. Okay. Uh, Wilfredo, did you take notes? Let me see. All right. All right. Excellent. Uh, Melody, did you take notes? Did you get a chance to take notes? Yes, but I don't know how to show you. <laughs> <laughs> no, Maybe we have I to... could send a, a picture to the group. Uh, yeah, you can do that, but don't worry. Don't worry. No, it's okay. I just want to. I just want to see what you guys are. You know what you guys are writing. So, all right. Let me show you my notes. Okay, that I took for the listening. Uh, I use a black marker so that you guys can see. Okay, so you see that I'm just basically a uh, man, girl, right? That's what I'm basically doing, right? And then here is where they agree, right? Llegaron acuerdo, right? This is the section where I put whatever agreement they had, I put Sorry it here. For PM, yeah. Right? And then I put two people, a engin engineer project, lounge it, right that's where they're at they're in the lounge and then what are they working on i put a muse amusement park y después puse boy, men and girl and i put you know the problems right now yo no escribí todo lo time the the date that he works what time he gets off work what days he works I didn't write that. Those are like special details. I didn't. I didn't get a chance to write that, but I did. Uh, I did write the agreement that they had. Right, el acuerdo que ellos llegaron. That was important, right? So I, they put Sunday 4 p.m. That is the date they're going to get together. How are they going to do their work? I put online. They agree on to uh, doing their work online. Okay. Let's go to the questions and let's see if we can answer some of the questions. Okay, this is the questions, right? 18, why do the students meet? Esa ya la tengo. Just on these notes, I have it. Let's see, let's uh, check out the answers. A, to find out when a project is due, no. B, to finish a project and hand it in? Maybe, but they were not going to finish that day. C, to discuss a problem with a project? Maybe, to start work on a project. Which one do you think? 
Letter I'd D. say D. A. 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 Okay. D. Okay. Some people say A. Some people say D. Okay. Let's see the problems with A. To find out when a project is due. No, they already know that when it's due, all right? Mm -hmm. No, it's just five sense. Mm -hmm. It's right. work and prayer together. Correct. Uh, B, to finish a project and hand it in, mm, they were not going to finish that, that will day. Be in the that will be on Sunday. That will be the like next Sunday. Sunday. Uh -huh. <clears throat> uh, C, to discuss a problem with a project? Mm, no, Ooh. they were not, not necessarily, right? They were starting the project, right? They were discussing the problems with the meeting when they were going to meet. They meet to start the project and then find out the problem that they had. Correct, correct. So the correct answer here will be D, to start work on a project together. Okay, very good. 19, what kind of project have the students been assigned? Right? Do alguien tiene esa en sus notas? Yes, I have it. What do you have? Engineering, engineering projects. Okay, hold on, hold on, Wilfredo. Uh, uh, she was speaking. Can, can you repeat? Designing an amusement park. Correct. That's the correct answer. Uh, uh, let's see if we, some people say engineer project. Yo también escribí esa engineer project, but then later on, they said amusing, amusing park, amusement park. Yeah. Uh-huh. So let's look at the answers. What kind of project have the students been assigned? A, planning a work schedule. B, designing an amusement park. Ahí está, right? Let's continue reading just to make sure. Writing a paper on engineering. Mm, that's tricky, right? No. Drawing a blueprint of a building. No. It's uh, designing an amusement park. Right. Right? Alguien escribió esa? This uh, amusement park? No, not really. So, so yeah, okay. engineer I, park. I wrote in a split from engineering project. Okay, okay, good. good. So, so maybe you put engineer project, you know, flechita abajo, amusement park. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. Now, this is tricky, right? Porque algunas de estas palabras sí estaban dentro de todo el área. For example, look at answer A, planning. Planning estaba ahí. Eh, engineer, look at answer C, engineering. Esa sí estaba ahí, right? Pero lo, es decir, esa palabra se mencionó, pero no en este contexto, right? So be careful with that, okay? The correct answer is a this, the signing an amusement park. Okay, la vamos a escuchar otra vez just for you guys to compare your notes. Okay, all right. Uh, 20. Listen again to part of the conversation that answered the question. Uh, so for this one, I need to play it. Oh, you want to split the work out. Number 20. Why does the man mention his part-time job? ¿Pudieron escuchar? Mm -hmm. no. Yes. Yeah? Yes, yes. Okay. Ah, oh, no, no, that's 21, sorry. The one Number before. 19. What kind of project have the students been assigned? Esa ya la contestamos, right? B, designing an amusement park. Number 20. Why does the man mention his part-time job? Mm. Number 20 dijo esta. Creo que se brincó una el, el, aquí el examen. Okay. Seems like Yeah. Let's look at 21. Why does the man mention his part-time job? Um, did, did somebody understand that? Like the concept? why he mentioned that to the girl? He mentioned that because he says, oh, that's a problem. Me coming here and meeting constantly, it's a problem for me. And she said, why? It's, and then he mentioned the part-time job. Part -time, yeah. Right, right. See. All right. Be there to see her. 
A, to offer an excuse for not doing his share of the work. No, right? Él no estaba como, hey, mire, no puedo hacer el trabajo. No, right? B, to make it clear that he is dedicated to the project. No. no. C, to explain why there is a problem with his schedule. Correct. Yep. That's it, right? So in my notes, right, I put man, woman. And then under man, I put problem. Problem. No puse part-time job, pero si puse problem. So, you know, that helps me. Uh, 20, let me see which one goes next. Listen again to part of the conversation, then answer the question. Oh, you want to split the work up? I thought we'd uh, just meet up for an hour or two each night and do everything together. Number 21. What can be inferred about the woman? Okay, esa, esa realidad sería la 20, right? la que está numerada aquí 20. All right, so the woman said, oh, I thought we'd just come here and meet up every, every night, okay? What can be inferred about the woman? A, she is excited at the idea of working separately? That's no, right? So when it, she sounds a little disappointed. She B, is confused she's confused about the project requirements? No. no. C, she is disappointed by the she's man's suggestion, okay? Let's Thanks listen to, to it again. Anything together. Again, to part of the conversation. Then answer the question. Oh, you want to split the work up? I thought we'd uh, just meet up for an hour or two each night and do everything together. Okay, did you listen to her t tone of voice? It was yeah, like yeah, disappointing, buddy. right? Yeah. Very good. Very good. So, ese es un buen ejemplo de cómo el tono de voz, eh, el, el, la actitud, it's important for you to pay attention to that. Uh, and then 22. Number 21. What can be inferred about the woman? Okay, sería esta la última. Right? Then we're going to see. Listen again to part of the conversation. Then answer the question. Well, we should probably get together at least one more time. To go over everything and make sure it looks good? That's probably a good idea. I'm free pretty much all day Sunday, after I wake up anyway. And I've also got some time next Monday after class. What do you think? Number 22. Why does the man say this? After I wake up anyway. He said that after I wake up anyways, to indicate that he may not be available early in the morning. Maybe. maybe. Sounds mm -hmm. like it. B, to suggest that they meet on Sunday. Maybe. Yeah, too. No. C, yeah. to indicate that he was prefer to finish the project on Monday. No, right? No. D, no. to suggest that they may meet before noon. No, what's letter B? Uh, I think it, I think it's A when he says, uh, "I'll be available after I wake up, anyways." You know, so that means that he will be available, but no, 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 no. Uh, letter A. Why does the man say this? Mm -hmm. Why does the man say I this? I wake up, anyways. That's the sentence that they. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's, so let's put it again. Conversation. Then answer the question. Well, we should probably get together at least one more time. To go over everything and make sure it looks good? That's probably a good idea. I'm free pretty much all day Sunday, after I wake up anyway. And I've also got some time next Monday after class. What do you think? Number 22. Why does the man say this? After I wake up anyway. So he said, I will be available all day Sunday after I wake yeah. up anyways. So that means, and the so question will, is, why does the man say this? And then after mm -hmm. I wake up anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's you, not the suggestion for Sunday. 
-hmm. but instead that he will not be available early in the morning. Mm -hmm. Correct, yes, I agree with you. The correct answer will be A, right? Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. So let, let me stop sharing so that we can go back and, and I can show you, right? Now, my notes were very short, right? I didn't write a lot, but if you look here, I have the man problem, right? I was waiting for the girl to maybe give a problem, but she didn't have a problem, right? And then, en que llegaron acuerdo. So I use this little symbol, so here, right? So this section was where I was gonna put whatever agreement, porque del inicio ya empecé a escuchar y dije, ah, ellos están teniendo como un, una reunión para llegar a algo, llegar al acuerdo, a algo, okay? So immediately, I said, okay, va a haber una sección donde ellos llegan a acuerdo o no llegan a un acuerdo. Okay. So that's why I put the, these two lines here, right? So I divided my notes. Okay. Main idea here. Later on, I found out it was an amusement park. Do you see la flecha que puse? Do you see the arrow that I put? Yeah. Okay. So, lo hubiera hecho más grande, ¿verdad? De aquí a aquí. Indicando que engineering project, pero más específicamente, amusement park. Okay. All right. So, you have to try to do something like this. Okay. Let's listen to another audio and let's see if we can take notes. All right. So, ya más o menos tienen la idea, ¿verdad? Like how you should be taking notes. Okay, let's do another audio. I'm going to share with you one more time. And creo que este sería el último that we, that we can do today, okay? All right, perfect. This is a audio about American history class, okay? So you guys get ready. Listo? Si tienen un marcador o un lapicero así oscuro, eh, un marker de estos negros, <clears throat> so that we can see it. You can take notes with that or algo que sea oscuro, okay? All right, ready? One, two, three. Listen to part of a lecture in an American history class. Okay, so continuing our talk about early American development, Today I'd like to touch on the topic of railroads. In the early years of the um, United States, the majority of the population lived on the East Coast. But as new land was acquired and American pioneers moved westward in larger numbers, the need eventually arose for better ways to transport people and goods from one end of this increasingly large country to the other. Private uh, roads were being built but cars, of course, hadn't yet been invented. And it was clear that horses and carriages weren't capable of meeting the transportation needs of all these people who were packing their possessions and moving west. But more important for the, um, for the country and its economy was the need to provide adequate transportation for all the commerce that was taking place out in the frontier. In order to tap into the business potential created by this population of pioneers, you first had to, well, you had to find a way to get products and supplies out there. Some of the early attempts to meet these new transportation demands included iron railways designed for horse-drawn carriages to travel on, and man-made canals that connected rivers and lakes to allow steamships greater range. But the most efficient solution to the country's transportation problems combined the best assets of these earlier methods. The uh, railroad tracks from the horse-drawn railways and best of all, steam engines from the steamships. It was this new technology that would eventually make the railroad so popular, much more popular than steamships ever were. And so, the steam-powered engine with a set of railroad tracks, became trains as we now know them. Around the 1830s, railroads overcame their competition 
because they were a fast, cheap, and direct form of mass transportation. Railroads rapidly gained popularity, and new sets of tracks were constructed at a tremendous rate. By 1840, there were almost 3,000 miles of tracks in the USA. By 1850, there were more than 9,000 miles of tracks. By 1860, 30,000 miles. However, despite the railroad's popularity, or perhaps because of it, there were problems. Without a central group to organise all these construction efforts, the end results were neither practical nor efficient. The first railroads were, well, nothing more than unconnected local systems, each running for only a few miles. Even worse, because there was no one, because there was no single person or group to regulate all this construction, the tracks weren't all built the same size. There were different tracks of different widths all across the country, and therefore they could not be easily linked. A train that ran on my tracks, for example, might not be able to roll onto yours. If the tracks were different sizes, if one set was wider than the other, it was nearly impossible. By 1860, there were seven different widths of railroad tracks being used in the United States. There were, uh, there were two main factors that eventually led to the standardisation of railroad track widths. The first was the growing need to ship grain and other food back east from farms in the recently settled west. All that open land out west was being used to grow food. Farmers were growing all kinds of crops that they needed to get to markets in the big cities on the east coast. The second factor was war. In 1861, the American Civil War began when, uh, I mean, as the southern states attempted to break away from the north. The rush to build new railroads slowed as the nation concentrated its resources on the war effort. But usage of existing tracks rose sharply. You know, the army had a need to transport vast numbers of troops and supplies from one place to another, and the railroad was a, um, a perfect solution. But in order for the railroad to be an effective tool of the military, standardisation of track widths was required. The Railroad Act of 1862 was designed to, to add government backing to this idea that people have been talking about for a while. But no one could quite agree over how to do, well, anyway, it was the idea of building a transcontinental railroad, that is, a set of tracks that spanned from one end of the continent to the other, from the Atlantic Ocean to the, um, to the Pacific. It also set the standard width for railroad tracks. This paved the way for an interconnected network of railroad tracks across the country. In 1869, the Transcontinental Railroad was officially completed when the symbolic golden spike was hammered into the tracks in Utah. The golden spike was the last spike, and yes, it was actually made of gold. And of course, it was driven in with great ceremony by a silver hammer. This marked an important moment in the development of the US, from a group of... Uh, states and territories into a single, unified country. Now, get ready to answer the questions. You may use your notes to help you. Okay, very good. So, that was a long one, definitivamente, right? That's a long passage. All right. So, let's go back. Okay, I'm going to show you my notes. All right, what I have. Okay. A.M., American history, okay? Uh, let's see, then I have uh, American railroads. Um, then I have West and East. They, they begin moving the railroad from East to West. So I use a little uh, railroad thing. Uh, importance, the reasons, commerce, uh, iron, uh, no, uh, commerce, 
for business, okay? Three type of railroads, systems, iron canals, and the steam railroad, right? So hasta ahí llegué. Las fechas, ya no tuve tiempo. It's like, it's too much. So, olvídense, no van a poder escribir todos esos details, right? Then I have problems. Problems. I got two problems. And then I have una flechita aquí que es solution. From here. So I have two problems, two solutions. Okay. What do you have? Let me see. Miguel. Let me see. Se ve. Okay. I can't see everything, pero veo que tiene bastante flechas, right? Yeah. I don't have a pens, just a mm -hmm. mechanical pencil. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you, you basically see, you see. I mm -hmm. first started with early American development, then moved to railroads, and then from railroad railroads to everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the dates I only wrote the decades. And mm -hmm. then over here I have the main like the main issue, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the main issues, and then here the factors that led to uh, standardization. Okay, correct. The standardization, right? So there was two, two, two problems. And then what led to the inst in standardization was ships, shipping food, and the war, the military. The civil war. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, what do you have? Uh, let's see, Wilfredo, what do you have? Okay. All right, very good. A uh, microphone, Wilfredo, let me see. Microphone. American history class. Then I got this uh, uh, majority people, why they need the transportation very for good. the got horses and all that transport. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were going by rivers and all that. Mm -hmm. Then they created the railroad. They went mm -hmm. decade by decade. They were increasing the miles of construction. Mm -hmm. And they were doing this kind of, another kind of uh, tracks. There mm -hmm. were uh, short trips for those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, they got the solutions uh, for the uh, problems they had. And uh, in 1962, they completed, I know in 1869, they completed the railroad from mm -hmm. east to west. Mm -hmm. And that's what I got. Good, good. You have you have a lot of information there. Not that, I mean, you, you have okay. a lot of information in a small space. Okay, alguien más mm -hmm. no quiere mostrar? Uh, someone else wants to show us theirs, their notes? Alguien más se atreve ahí? Show us your notes. Yes. <laughs> okay, Veronica. Okay. These are my notes. Okay. I have a lot of information. Da, dame, no ten, solo, tenemos, solo tenemos un minuto, Veronica, pero danos así como un summary, like a quick overview. What do you have? Like. Okay. Okay, I have that they move from east to west. Uh-huh. I have the problems, the solutions, I have some dates, mm -hmm. and also I have the, the products, uh, supplies, and the transportation that they use. Mm -hmm. And also I have some in 1862 that there were some problems with the government, mm -hmm. and that's all. Okay, all right, very good, Veronica. Good job. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm going to copy the questions and send them in the group of WhatsApp so you guys could try to answer. Ahorita, antes de que tengo otra clase, pero eh, voy a copiar las preguntas so you guys could try to answer the questions, okay? For there. All right, so, hey, de eso se trata, right? So we get better every time that we listen to an audio like this and take notes. Van a ir mejorando. Siempre van a ir mejorando ustedes. All right? The first time I didn't capture some, the next time I'm going to get better. I'm going to listen for the main ideas, general uh, general ideas. All right, and go from there. Okay. All right, very good, guys. So uh, 
try to work on that the weekend, uh, finish the platform, finish section one, section two, and you can start, you can go into section three if you want in the platform, finish the platform, right? Porque de ahí viene su nota. Um, and then my recommendation is that you start listening to, to audios. Así como es en Contreras en YouTube, you guys can listen to audios and practice right now, practice taking notes, okay? No tanto contestar todas y llegar a contestar todas perfectamente. No, work on note taking right now, okay? Empiecen ustedes a desarrollar esas habilidades de note taking. Use symbols, use codes, use pictures, líneas, graphs, whatever you want to use. Okay? All right, so practice that skill. And next week, we're going to continue practicing that skill too. All right, guys, uh, have a good weekend. I'll see you next week, Monday. Yeah. Have a, nice have a good night. Too, yeah. Okay. Have a good weekend. All right. Bye-bye.